Uh, Charles Payne is with me right now on um, what he makes of all of this. Um, they kept it a surprise. The timing of this is important. Um, what do you think? I, I think the key was that it, was, it seemed very amicable. That was a great press conference. Right. They both Normally were very. He tweets from somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good riddance, you know. Yeah. Don't let the door hit you. Right, right. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting, too, that her staff only learned this morning, so maybe that's why there were no leaks. And not dissing her staff, but it's just the whole thing is so so crazy that someone would have yeah. to keep that from their staff until the very moment it's announced. Uh, is, is well, sort well of, that the president knew about it for a while, right? Well, he's saying, you know, six yeah. months. That's a long time. And, and, you know, it's not uncommon in that job. You know, we no, know that no. that's a, and, and it, she already became a supernova in my mind. She really, uh, her political stature just it, it surged to the point where, uh, you know, I think from here on out there is a law of diminishing returns uh, with respect to what else could be done. She elevated the position back to the level it hadn't been in for a very long time. Right. She and, and she always stayed herself. I think this is the key. She had a lot of. You know, disagreements with President Absolutely. Trump. Absolutely. And she was never. And she spoke her mind. She spoke her mind. And Larry, Larry Cutlow, Cutlow made Cutlow that. Right. Yeah. Think <laughs> the same like, thing. She yeah. did not let that go. She didn't let that go. And yeah. I think that uh, I think that helps. I think she's going to be actually an asset also in the campaign trail. Um, she wanted to volunteer that this was not a 2020 move. Um, but she does have a bright future, you would think. I mean, she's universally loved by Republicans. <laughs> Uh, and a good many, a majority of Democrats, which is an unusual. Very unusual. Right? Our, our tough shoes to fill. She's obviously uh, looking at 2024. Right. Uh, you know, this move was a 2024 move in the first place, mm -hmm. so to bolster the resume, uh, I think. So uh, she, she's a political star. Uh, what happens from here, you know, all kinds of guessing games and speculation out there, but she's not going to be off the national stage between now and 2024. So something's yeah, going to happen. We talk about up. turnover in the Trump White House and that it's been the most incredible of any president. And that's true. But it has slowed down dramatically this year. It's slowed down in the nature of, of these turnovers have slowed down. It feels right. to me that President Trump arrived in D.C. and a lot of people said, hey, you know, you got to go with some of these establishment types. You know, you've never been down here. We know you want to drain a swamp, but right. at least have someone as a tour guide. And he picked a whole bunch of people. He did the politically correct thing to do, which was not what got him there in the first place. And I think he slowly but surely found people he was comfortable with, people that were comfortable with his vision. And that's who he's been bringing in. And they've been doing it extraordinarily. Mike Pompeo, Bolton, uh, you know, they've done an extraordinary job. And, and you know, there's some folks out there, uh, Mattis does his thing. You don't hear a lot from him, but he does his thing also. So well, his, his name comes up as another one who might go. And I'm wondering if that would be a big, big loss there. I mean, it would be, although, um, you know, it, it, they're, they're, he's been there for a while now. Uh, you don't hear the sort of uh, any kind of acrimony. Uh, again, right. I think they're on the same page. It feels like everyone in that White House at this point on the same page. There were some folks that you knew were going to be temporary, like a Gary Cohn, wanted to get there, get a few things done, help corporate America, help Wall Street, tax cuts, most most important to him. Uh, you know, Mnuchin is something of a wild, of a wild card, I think, especially yeah. since it feels like Navarro and Lighthizer have taken the lead in, within the administration of, on some of these things like, you know, trade policy and things like that. So, uh, but even then, that, it wouldn't be sort of the sort of, you know, high high, high stakes uh, drama in a latent kind of uh, event if it did happen. So, uh, you know, Nikki Haley really did herself in this country a great job while she was at the U.N. Absolutely. There's no denying that. I, I, I'm interested in your view on this backup in rates and the effect it has. Uh, what, what, what do you make of that? I mean, we've got a lot of housing ETFs on the, already well into bear market territory. What do you think? I, you know, when we were talking about this in February, as we approached 3%, we weren't even there. I mean, 3% right, right. uh, on the 10-year yield, and we were both kind of scratching our head, you know. Again, the first sign was February 2nd when the January jobs report, 2.9% uh, jump in wages year over year. That was a red flag. We immediately had that down day, 666,000 points. Another two sessions of over 1,000 points on the downside. The two biggest point losses in the history of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It was a head-scratcher then. Right. You can argue, and I heard your last segment, the, uh, you know, the velocity of this, how rapidly it's happening. But 3%, I just don't see killing the economic. I don't either, economic, but you have uh, people, you know, like Jonathan Honig would focus on the, the higher and accelerating number of 52-week lows. And do you, as someone who crunches number, do you look at that and say, well, maybe? There's no doubt uh, of this S&P 500, over 200 uh, of these names are down for the year. In fact, 20% are down more than 20%. Wow. Uh, you know, so it has been one of these years. And I, and I, Does that presage when it gets to that level, it gets worse? 
It suggests that at some point, the big money which has come out of these big techs have to decide whether they want to move that cash to the sidelines or somewhere else or start to pie some of this value stuff. Now, the, one of the areas that I thought was value is materials. Right. They're getting hammered today, right, because you have the PPG warning. So that's the worst performer today when you might see money generally rotating and seeking value in that area. So there's some odd things going on. There's definitely it has not been a stock pickers, you know, it has not been a dart throwing market. You just can't buy any stock. In. And, and a lot right. of people, you know, if half your portfolio is down for the year, that's not uncommon right now. And so the surface does belie the fact that, uh, you know, after you get away from the gigantic winners, it's been a struggle. Um not a struggle for you. I'm looking for next week. You're going to be on right at this show, 2 p.m. Eastern time. You know, your whole thing is about making people money. Your whole thing is the market. You're an encyclopedia with it. Um, so your timing is impeccable next next week. What will you do differently? Or will you? Uh, well, you know, the show now at 6 is, is different in the sense that everything's in a can. What I love to right. feed off is the movement. Right. I love watching the markets. I love watching intraday lows, intraday highs. I like the patterns. I like to see what's happening. Like today, materials, no one's talking about that. That's a big story. Yeah. Why is the worst performing sector in the market getting hammered again today, and what does it mean for the economy? You know, it's not so good news. So like today, you would be leading with materials. I may not lead with it, but I have to share that with the audience okay. because it has broad economic implications. It does touch everyone's lives. Even if you're not in the market, no, you know right. what? You probably bought some Sherwin-Williams paint. To no, work, you're you know. canny with these developments. And so I, wanted, I want to connect these dots and, and, and go a little bit deeper and make sure, because okay. everyone is connected to the market, even if they don't realize it. It's a pity you're not before me, so I could pretty much copy <laughs> you. Um, don't you do the same with me. All right, all right. All right look forward all right, to it. Thanks a lot, Neil. Uh, beginning on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, right after this show.